Hi, I'm Mr. One Two Three Five here again. I'm here with the Kaiser Seventy Five, as he's known on YouTube. Best friend Matt Kaiser just blew in from the coast of North Carolina. All the way from That's right, and he's here to help me unbox the brand new Beatles and Mono vinyl box set. Finally got it today, released on September 9th, twenty fourteen, and uh, I'm a little late to the party on this one, admittedly. Uh, everybody's kind of done their unboxings already, but I just never received mine. Um, but yeah, me and Matt here are going to kind of play off, talk about the albums, and uh, discuss a little bit of things. <clears throat> First of all, let's start with the book. Came in here, nice hardback book. Um, many unseen photographs in here. Here's a bunch of old ladies putting copies of Hard Day's Night into the vinyl sleeves, which is pretty cool. You don't get to see the inside of that a whole lot. Great shots of the band and stuff. Them at the Ed Sullivan show in 1964. Um, yeah, anyway, really cool book. Discusses recording of the albums and whatnot. You guys are here for the music, though. <laughs> and we're going to start, fresh out of the box, with their first UK album. Please, please, please. First thing to note, 13 hours studio time, and it was done. The Beatles started recording this at 10 a.m., mastered it at 11 p.m. that night. Very, very impressive for a first album. sleeves, just like the original, the black and gold Polar Foam label, like as it was released back in the day, 180 gram vinyl, the updated copyright information for the album, <laughs> and uh, some amazing songs, some amazing covers, of course, um, this album was primarily just uh, covers though, I saw her standing there and uh, there's a place, Lennon McCartney songs, but what, what I love about this album is the very first song is what I just imagined being back there when this album was first released and hearing that one, two, three, four, boom, bah, 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 like that sound back then was just completely new and just so rocking. It was a one of a kind sound and to hear that right off the bat from this group was just history on that after that count of four, history was all set in It's one of the most famous uh, four part count ends ever, I believe, for sure. Um, also, the song Boys, sung by Ringo, that was a cover. Um, you know, they, they tried to give Ringo a little bit of air time yeah. on there. <laughs> the single Please Please Me, Love Me Do, automatic first hits for the band. Just an amazing debut record. Even has the original Emnitex cleaning um, material logo on there. I don't even think this company exists anymore, but uh, it was on the original, and that's how they decided to package it. They tried to give you the most true-to-form way that this album was released back in 1962, which is pretty impressive. Um, and, and what's cool about this album and, and the, the, the ones come after it, like Beatles for Sale and um, Rubber, Soul. Rubber Soul, is is that, you know, Cartney and Lennon had their own stuff, but at the same time they paid tribute to other artists that were they were inspired by and yeah. they did that with their first like four to five albums before they just did everything on their own. Of course, uh, yeah, the, the first two albums completely inspired by stuff that they would play live in clubs and just uh, artists that, like he said, inspired mm -hmm. them. Anyway, that is Please Pleasing, one of the best debut rock and roll albums of all time. Okay, next out of the box. Beatles' second UK album with the Beatles. Personally, in one of my top five favorite Beatles albums. Move the cellophane. Get the record out, which should have the original yellow and black Parlophone label, which it does. Heavy weight, grand vinyl, beautiful pressing. Yeah, the uh, yellow and black Parlophone label, just as it was released. 
least. I love the songs It Won't Be Long and Hold Me Tight and uh, the cover of Roller Beethoven by Chuck Berry. Just uh, a rocking little record that I want my jockey to play. And um, personally, I like this album a little bit better than their first album. I feel like the first album was a great introduction, and this one right here is when they decided to get really rock it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I just think this is one of the best albums they've ever done. Yeah. The full back sleeves and all that just as it was released. <clears throat> Amazing record. One of my favorites. And now we get to the first all written by the Beatles album, Hard Day's Night, the soundtrack to the film, their first Beatles movie. America's version of this album it got a little bit screwed over. America's version features the songs from the movie and orchestra cuts, just like a soundtrack that you would hear in a movie, where the UK version is just Beatles songs, which is what people prefer. <laughs> The main single from this one, Can't Buy Me Love, hear that one every damn day. Once again, yellow and black Parlophone label. Just like all of them all the way up to um, the White Album, which is the first album on the Beatles' own Apple label. I don't know if how many people know this, but actually the, the title, A Hard Day's Night, actually came from Ringo. Mm -hmm. He's the one that came up with that title. Well, it was, you know, unincidental. Um, was like purposely like, hey Ringo, give us a name for this song, because I highly doubt they ever did that. <laughs> but um, but now nah, it's what they were just working or something, all these letters yeah. and just the whole big long day. End of the night, and Ringo said, oh, it's been a hard day's night. <laughs> and then boom, there, there you go. John immediately decided we need to write a song about that. Anyway, fantastic album, one of the best in my personal opinion, especially for the first self-written Foley Beatles album. Back in sleeve. Tightly. Next out of the box, the Beatles' fourth album, Beatles for Sale. <clears throat> this is the Beatles' first gatefold cover. It's one of my favorites. As you notice, none of the song titles are on the back. As you would normally see it, that's because back in the 60s, they were not packaged in this crap. Whenever you walked into a record store, you could just open, open it up. and read, read the song titles. So, it wasn't inconvenient back in the day, but it's good they put them in cellophane for this release. The first gatefold cover by them, this is them playing at the Washington Coliseum. This photo down here. Fantastic album. Fantastic covers. Uh, once again, yellow and black parlophone label. Gosh, for me this is such a. For me, I, I prefer like the more of, of you know fast tempo rock and music and like Kansas City, hey hey of hey. Of course, yeah. Uh, oh crap. Um, Mr. Rock, Moonlight. Mr. Moonlight. <laughs> uh, rock and roll music. Everyone um, wants to be my baby. baby. The closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such, such, such a great, great album. Fantastic album. Really great cover on this, too. Their cover of Buddy Holly, um, Words of Love on this album is a really good cover. Yeah, fantastic album. Really pays tribute to their heroes, once again, as they did on their first two. And uh, Honey Don't was a really great song, uh, sung by um, Ringo on this album as well. Good rockabilly style. Um, just breaking new ground on every album. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that is it. Beatles for sale. Next out of the box, The Beatles' second movie, the soundtrack to Help. <laughs> this is when The Beatles started becoming in color. Uh, once again, the American release of this album was um, done with just songs from the movie and their orchestral versions just that you would hear in like the background of the movie. So America got screwed over on their version of Help. But once again, the UK edition just had um, original songs and covers. The cover of Act Naturally, sang by Ringo. Ringo on this album, is just fantastic. <laughs> Which I think is one of his more underrated songs that he sings. I think it doesn't give because it's personally one of my favorites, apart from the two that he's written. I think Act Naturally is a pretty good one. Yeah. It's just hard to believe Ringo only had two original songs in the entire career. 
and they were all from the later days of the Beatles. Well, you got the song Yesterday on here, and Yesterday is actually the most covered song of all time. More artists covered that song than any other song, which pretty much makes the Beatles the most covered band as well in music history, which is pretty cool. And of course, the debut song is just iconic as well, one of the best singles. And uh, really emotional songs on this one too, A lot, every single song kind of dealing with um, heartbreak and whatnot. Songs like Another Girl and uh, You're Gonna Lose That Girl. Uh, You're Gonna Lose That Girl being one of my favorite Beatles songs of all time. But uh, yeah, fantastic album. Definitely one of my favorites. Now the next album is where we really see the Beatles start to come to their own and start to reinvent the world of music forever, starting with the fantastic album Rubber Soul. Mm -hmm. This is actually the very first Beatles album that I ever owned. <laughs> Back when I first got into these guys. Oh my god. The elongated cover on this one. Funny story behind this. The Beatles were shooting um, uh, the cover art as well. And it was this picture, kind of. And they had it leaning up against a chair. And they were looking at it or whatnot. And then for some reason, the, the photo slid down in the chair and it made their faces look a little bit elongated in the light or whatever. And Paul pointed at it and was like, oh my god, can you print it like that? Can you print it like that? And he's like, well, sure, I can print it like that. And so we have this really elongated, kind of cartoony uh, <laughs> album cover. And it fit because the name of the album, Rubber Soul, they look a little uh, rubbery. You stretch it out. And what's cool, like Michael said, that how like their music starts to change and hear it and everything. It also goes with you know the album itself. You can tell the difference with the artwork, the the, the font and the, the lettering of Rubber Soul, and and just like you said about the the picture, the photograph, the color, their hair. Like you can tell that this is a turning point, not just for the Beatles, but for the industry of music themselves. Uh, and you got like something like Nor Norwegian Wood, where it's just kind of and no nowhere, man. You just you hear that very spacey, like, out there. Yeah, this is the first album where George started playing sitar mm -hmm. on the song of Region Wood. And the opener, Drive My Car, is just an instant, just <laughs> just immediately gets you going when you yeah. hear that song. And with, and with all, the, and the, along with the sitar, they eventually you'll hear throughout the songs coming up, like, especially Maxwell's Silver Hammer with the, the clang clang, and they very get kind of worldly with their music. Oh, of very course. experimental. That's for sure. This is definitely the beginning point to where they mm -hmm. really started reinventing the wheel with, with, with this album. Not to say the previous five were not amazing themselves. <laughs> Next out of the box, Revolver. Oh, they started experimenting on this one. And actually, this is the first album where George Harrison actually opened up the album with the song Taxman. Uh, beautiful um, copyright information. Beautiful uh, uh, album cover on that one too. I think that was designed by one of the Beatles' friends. The artwork for this one, yellow and black, Parlophone label once again. The song I'm Only Sleeping actually has the first instance of backwards guitar that had ever been recorded. Uh, George Harrison purposely tried to. Um, record his solo very carefully because he knew it was going to be spliced backwards, which is pretty interesting. And also, this is, this is pretty much where Harrison started putting his songs, and not only Taxman, but uh, I want to tell you mm -hmm. as well. So Harrison's starting to come out of the woodwork here a little bit. Yeah, and the, the song Tomorrow Never Knows by John as well, really the psychedelic, just uh, way out there track. Um, yeah, they, they finally got their heels into experimenting on this one, and it really paid off. Uh, some people consider this to be their best album, um, from what I've heard. Um, the album next, though, is considered to be the best album of all time, up against the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds, which is always going to be debated. But Revolver, a classic in itself. If you don't own this, you don't know rock music. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. <laughs> Good to God Almighty, this is considered to be, by most people, the greatest album ever recorded to tape ever. 
Many people would argue it was by the Beach Boys, but I personally consider this to be the greatest album ever recorded. Even the name of the, I mean, even the name of this album compared to, I mean, Pet Sounds, I'm just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, um, yellow and black Parlophone label. And uh, what's special about this album as well is that this is the first time that uh, people started incorporating prizes into the release of music. You know, you have these special editions that come out all today that include uh, bonus songs, bonus material, maybe even posters. This album actually um, was the first to include cutouts for your children. These cutouts <laughs> are really, really hard to find inside of the album because they were meant to be cut out. So, you know, you, get, you find a remastered copy of this and you'll get holes and stuff in there. You have the patches here that can be cut out to sew onto your jacket or whatever. You've got a mustache that you can cut out and stick out. And this right here is a stand. You can cut along the white here and around their heads or whatever. You can fold the white part back and set it up on your desk or whatever. And these are little badges. Just really cool how they did that on there. What's also cool about this album is that, yes, we know that the Beatles, but they're one of the first bands to go under a different alias as a band. Yeah, you have bands like Foxborough Hot Tubs, like Green Day, who kind of did that, and this is their alias. Also, the album was originally released in this red and white wash inner sleeve, but once again, in the good sense of the record company, they packaged it in this one so that you can keep the original sleeve pristine. Nice and clean, so you don't damage it sliding your record in and out. So yeah, Beatles once again changing the game and this being one of the most <laughs> um, talked about and celebrated albums of all time. Songs like uh, When I'm 64, Within You Without You by George Harrison. It, if I'm not mistaken, is this one of the first, um, I guess, albums to feature the lyrics? To the songs? That is that is correct. This is actually the first rock album that featured the lyrics to every single song on the back of the sleeve. Uh, no other album had done that before. Uh, just a fantastic album. I mean, Sgt. Pepper fading into it with a little help from my friends, which is great. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, a classic. Fixing a Hole. Yeah, there's Benefit from Mr. Kite. One of the craziest, most mm -hmm. out there songs ever, probably for the time. And especially if you've seen Across the Universe, that scene alone, oh man. It's wild. Totally wild. <laughs> and when the Sergeant Peppers, um, they retained their their coats and their regalia for Sergeant Peppers from the next album and the next movie released by the Beatles, Magical Mystery Tour. This album is fantastic, and in the UK, this album is only released as an EP. Because, and in America, America doesn't do that shit. America does not do EPs. So they released it as an album by saying, hey, you know, they got some songs they haven't put on albums yet. So maybe we should uh, maybe we should just stick it on there so that we can call it an album. And so they stuck songs like um, Hello Goodbye, Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane, Baby You're a Rich Man, and All You Need Is Love to complete the original movie songs that were just released as an EP across the topic. So um, special about this album is the comic book that was imprinted on the inner sleeve back in the 60s that explains the movie pictures and stills from the Magical Mystery Tour TV special. It was seriously released like this back in the day, which is probably another first, and this comic kind of explains the movie from front to back. Great colors on this one how it's been reproduced like this. It's really fantastic. Great shot there at the end. <clears throat> and because of the fact that this is the full album, I know that the label is going to be a capital label because capital was how the Beatles released their albums in America. It's going to be a rainbow label from Capitol Records, and as we see in here, Capitol Records, Rainbow Swirl. This is how you know it's an American copy because it's an album and not an EP. So that's a 
that's a little bit different from the yellow and black polytones that we've seen in this entire video. Fantastic record. Magical Mystery Tour, Full on the Hill, Flying, Blue Jay Way. Just a fantastic album and really shows off the magic. As it was intended. And now we move on to the second from the last album in the box, if you want to go ahead and pick that up here. The Fantastic and Beautiful White Album, or what's known as just the Beatles, if you want to go with self-titled. What's cool about this album is that back in the 60s it was released with a serial number on the front of the album cover, and every single number was different. This was created this way so that every single person who bought a copy of the White Album had a unique White Album. It was their number. That way you just want to be white. <laughs> the Beatles are embossed on the front cover, and you know, you can't really see it. Now, I've always found it interesting, I'm sure a lot of you have noticed is that the name the Beatles on this album isn't like straight, it's a little crooked. That's that was right. found very interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty entertaining. Do you know who owns copy number one of this album? Ringo. Ringo owns serial number 0000001. My number is <laughs> 903943. This is no other album has this number on it, which is pretty cool how they introduced that. That's very cool. <laughs> this album is also another gatefold with the tracks on the inside. What's cool about this is like only like mostly like dedicated, committed Beatles fans know these songs in this album. Because if people know the Beatles, they're not going to know like Your Blues or Piggies or Honey Pie or <laughs> Rocky Raccoon, or, uh, there it is, the Katuma Story of Bungalow Bill. Oh yeah, that's a great one there. But one of my favorites probably is Obla Dee Obla Da. Obla Dee Obla Da is definitely a highlight. Obla Dee Obla Da. This album is also a top loader, which is the first one of their collection. You didn't pull them from the side, you pulled them from the top. Um, tied in there. And this is the first album that was released on the Beatles' own Apple label, hence the Apple on the label. Another cool thing is that this album also included a poster. And there it is. A big-ass poster. We have a collage on the inside, on the outside, and the lyrics to every single song on the other side. Another cool thing about this record, I kind of reinvented, is the inclusion of four 8x10 photographs. Take a little feel inside. There they are. Of John, Paul, George, and Ringo. And they have a nice little clip on the back that says, artwork copyrighted Apple Corps. They do that so that if somebody tries to pass these off as original 1960 copies, you will not get ripped off. <laughs> this right there proves that it's from this box set and it's not an original. But yeah, pretty awesome. The Beatles only double album. Fantastic record. Fantastic prizes included in the record. Photographs and a giant poster. And then the last one of the bunch is the Beatles Mono Masters. This is kind of this box's version of Past Masters. And it is a triple album. Three records inside this thing. Now, the only thing different about the Mono Masters here that, um, than the original Past Masters that everybody probably owns is the inclusion of the Yellow Submarine soundtrack songs on side five of this album. Only a Northern Song all together now. Hey Bulldog and it's all too much. The reason for that is the mono mix of um, the Yellow Submarine soundtrack was just a fold down of two stereo tracks. They created a fake mono. <laughs> so it didn't warrant being included in this box set. But they did, they were nice enough to include it on the mono master.
Passmasters, but of course everything else that you find on the normal Passmasters is included in this set. And the wonderful Tri Gatefold, which is very, very cool, with some pictures and stories from recordings once again, <laughs> with three discs on the inside. All with an Apple label, it looks like. <clears throat> Amazing set here. Just a bunch of, just a compilation of all of the singles and B-sides and tracks that didn't make the original albums. And that is the Beatles in mono box set. The book is fantastic. The albums are fantastic. The reproduction that they put into these albums to recreate it, just how it was released back in the 60s, is just astounding. Um, you definitely don't find this level of detail in the, um, in the stereo box set that they released a few years ago. The stereo box set included a copy of the White Album that didn't have a serial number in it, back, like back in the day. And this one, they were kind enough to recreate these albums as they were intended. And I think that's very impressive. Um, so thank you for watching, and uh, keep listening to the Beatles. I hope to purchase your own copy of the box set. <laughs> Rock on.